Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. My name is Minister Inez Williams, and I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you all this evening to our first Sunday in November to our global Sunday night service here at Global Apostolic Movement. We are on Zoom and also live on Facebook every Sunday night at 7 p.m. We would like to personally welcome those that have tuned in before, welcome family, and encourage you to continue to worship with us. And those who are tuning in for the first time, we would also like to say welcome family. And we would like to welcome you and thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast on tonight, which is November the 5th, 2023, the first Sunday in November. We are delighted and happy that you have tuned into the broadcast on tonight. We are under the leadership of our very own Chief Apostle, LaShawn Reese, and we also have our presiding pastor, Pastor Beverly Cole. We ask that you take a quick moment to like, tag, and share this broadcast. Share this broadcast with anyone that you may know. And we're also asking that you turn on your notification. So every time that Global Apostolic Movement, also known as GAM, goes live, that you will be notified and you're able to tune into our services. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, and we do not take it lightly that you all have joined us on tonight. And our mission here at GAM is to impart, to birth, to train, and also to teach, minister, mentor, and aid in the lane of a strong foundation for local ministries, churches, organizations that will stimulate growth and help believers to maximize their potential. So once again, please type, tag, like, and share. And we want to welcome you all to our Sunday night virtual church service with Global Apostolic Movement. And now for our opening prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we come to you tonight on bent knees, bowed head, and a humble heart. Father God, we ask that you forgive us for all of our sins and transgression. Father God, forgive us for those sins and transgressions that we have committed knowingly and unknowingly, Father God. Father God, we thank you for tonight that you have brought us all safely here to tune in to our virtual church service. Father God, we gladly surrender to thy lives in worship and praise. As we gather on tonight, God, we remember those who are not with us today. For those who are sick, we ask for healing, God, on this side. And for those who are away from us, God, we ask that your blessing and your protection be upon them. We invite your Holy Spirit to move freely amongst us on tonight. Father God, come and dwell in each of our hearts. Father God, I ask that you equip us, challenge us, comfort us, and teach us. Inspire us, God, as we begin to learn more about your majestic ways. Father God, I ask that you bless Pastor Beverly Cole on tonight, God. Father God, as you bring forth your word, God. Father God, I'm asking that you allow your word come through for, with plainness and it comes through with boldness, God. Father God, I'm asking that you allow your word to prick the heart of your people, God. Father God, I'm asking you on tonight to let your word save some lost soul on tonight. And Father God, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to let your word fall on good ground on tonight, God. Father God, I'm asking that you open up the hearts of your people, open up the mind and the souls of your people so that your word may be received on tonight, God. Father God, there's somebody in the trenches, God, that's yelling out, I yield, I yield, God, that I can hold out no longer, Father God. Oh, Father God, I'm asking that you save them, God. I'm asking that you sanctify them and fill them with that divine spirit. And Father God, I'm asking you to look down upon our chief apostle, Sean Reese, and our family. Oh, glory to God, I'm asking that you continue to strengthen our God. Oh, Father God, for this challenge that you have given her, God. Father God, this work that you have given her in the ministry, God. Father God, I know that she's equipped to do what you have called her to do, God. Father God, I'm asking that you put a prayer put a hedge of protection around her and her family, God. Father God, continue to cover her with your blood, God. Father God, for we know tonight that your grace is sufficient, God. And Father God, we give you praise. And Father God, every individual that is under the sound of my voice on tonight, God. Father God, I'm asking that the word of God minister to the heart, mind, body, and soul, God. And Father God, I pray that we receive the word that you have on, have for us on tonight, God. Father God, use Pastor Coles as the to the utmost, God. 
Father God, let her words be plain, God, where even a child can understand them on tonight, God. Father God, fill our spirit. Fill our hearts and fill our souls on tonight, Father God. Father God, we give you praise. We give you honor, God, and we give you the glory. Psalms 104 tell us to enter into thy gates with thanksgiving and enter into thy courts with praise. Father God, we'll be thankful unto you on tonight, God, and we will bless your holy and divine name. Father God, we give you praise, we give you honor, God, and we give you glory. We thank you tonight for sitting high and looking down so low. Father God, I thank you for looking beyond all our faults and giving us our every need, God. Father God, give us our heart desires, God. But most of all, God, let us worship you and let us worship you in spirit and in truth. Father God, we give you praise. We give you honor, God, and we give you glory. And we want to let you know that we love you, God. We love you, Father. Oh, glory to God. And we won't take nothing for our trials and tribulations, God. Strengthen us where we weak. Build us up where we're torn down, God. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And God promise to give us rest. We give you praise, God. We give you honor and we give you glory. And without further ado, we're going to have our very own presiding pastor, Pastor Beverly Cole, come forth as she break bread with us on tonight. Saints of God, a message that you get ready. Get ready for the word of God. Get ready for the woman of God. Get ready for the anointing and the power that is going to come through, that is going to come through, through our computers and on Facebook on tonight, God. Get ready, saints of God. Your souls and your hearts and your minds will definitely be blessed into the hands of Pastor Beverly Cole. Amen, amen, amen. I want to welcome each and every one of you, and I am so glad to be back, amen. I've been missing out, and but I bless the Lord that I may have not, I may not have been, let me change that, on the church for Sunday nights, but I'm always in his presence, and so are you. Wherever you are, he said, he's there. So we just have to change our mindset sometimes. You know, you don't have to wait till you with Gam, but don't stop coming. That is not what I'm saying, <laughs> but what I am saying is learn how to rejoice in all situations and give him all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, and I just thank the Lord for each and every one of you that decided, amen, and made a choice to spend this hour with us. We are blessed, we are overjoyed, and we just want to break bread with you, amen? We want to share the goodness of the Lord with you. We want to let you know how blessed you are and how blessed we are. Sometimes you just need to take a praise break. Sometimes you just need to take a minute and just bless the Lord for everything that he has already done. Because you know, if you're not grateful for the things he's already done, like you and me as parents, why would you give more? We've got to learn in all things, no matter where we are and what we're going through, it says to give thanks in all things, for that is the will of God. It's his will. It's his will in us. And after everything that he's already done for us, how can we not give him praise? How do you not say thankful for causing you to rise up in the morning? How can you not be thankful that you have a roof over your head? How can you not be thankful that the blood is still running warm in your veins? How can you not be thankful that you have a voice? You have eyes to see, ears to hear. Your limbs are moving. Ah, uh, hallelujah. And that you have food on your table. You are able to reside in the comfort of your own home. Everybody can't say that. The people in Israel would love to be where you are. So why can't we give thanks? Why don't we give thanks for all that he's already done? What he's already brought you through, what he's taking you into. How can you not serve a God like that? Mm. I don't know about you, but when I think of the goodness of the Lord and all that he has done for me, the words, mm, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. I don't know about a whole lot of you, but when I look back, who and I just thank the Lord. There are times I just think back on where I would be, where I could be, where I used to be, and I just have to clap my hands. I just have to whisper, God, I bless you. When I look back and he didn't give me everything that I asked for, there are times I just have to wave my hand because see, he knew the things I didn't know. He knew that what I was asking for wouldn't benefit me. So he blocked it. So somebody right now just needs to say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for not giving me what I thought mm, I wanted or even deserved. Thank you for blocking it. Amen. So again, I just want to say thank you. I want to give honor to God first and foremost, who is my life. We always say he's the head. He is my life. Amen. 
And I'm learning even the more how to walk uh, more confidently in him. I'm learning and he's transforming, he's molding, he's shaping me, he's making me, he's even breaking me in order to be in the image of his dear son. And it hurts sometimes. Somebody is hurting right now. It hurts sometimes, but guess what? I'm not turning back. Guess what? I considered the cost. I didn't really understand the magnitude. I didn't understand what all I had to go through, but guess what? My answer is still yes. Guess what? I'm still going to do what he told me to do. Guess what? There is nothing back behind me. Guess what? I'm going to press. Even in the midst of the pain, I'm going to press. Because see, there is joy on the other side of your press. Somebody needs to press, amen? There is victory and there is truly a blessing in your pressing. Want to honor our chief apostle, Apostle LaShawn Reese, amen? And also want to acknowledge her husband, Senior Pastor Odin Reese, and God is doing such a phenomenal work in the both of them. And I just bless God for their yes. People don't understand what you go through when the yes. You may be, you may have given your yes, amen, and you're going through. But can I tell you to take heart? It ain't over until you win. Can I tell you to take heart? Because it's working something in and out of you, amen. And so without further ado, I've got to be obedient to the spirit of the Lord. This is not my message, but I'm going to share with you something that I woke up thinking about. As a matter of fact, this woke me up out of my sleep. It was as though I could hear these cries. I can't do this anymore. I can't carry this anymore. I got to let this thing go. And then I just heard, let it go. And I just want to share just briefly something that just happened to me uh, last week. I don't know about you and what you are carrying, but it was almost as though I know it wasn't my soul crying out, but I can't say that it couldn't have been. But the one thing that I do know, God allowed me to release some things. I don't know about you, but there is a freedom in the release. There is a freedom in, in letting go things that you carry. I'm sensing in my spirit and even when the Lord places on my heart. And the question is, are you willing to let go of the familiar things that you have become accustomed to? That's like those that are, you know, have maybe a, a person, I'm giving you this example, that has maybe had a leg amputated. And then the doctor tells them, although is nothing there, you may feel the pain. You may feel the symptoms. It may feel like that there is something still there, but it's gone. See, that's what's happening to a lot of us in the body of Christ. We're still feeling the effects of regret. We're still feeling the effects of mourning. We're still feeling the effects of abuse. We're still feeling the effects of all these different things that we have suffered through. But can I tell you, we talk about forgiveness. And we are to forgive those that have used us, misused us, abused us, and we shouldn't allow a root of bitterness to come in. But can I tell somebody that's watching or listening, maybe not tonight, but maybe you'll hear it later on, can I ask you to forgive yourself? We are the hardest people on ourselves. I don't need anybody else to tell me how wrong I am. I don't need anybody else to press me and beat me down because the enemy in a me, in me, does that all by himself. And so there are times when I didn't want to share because I couldn't explain to you why I wasn't ready to let go of X, Y, and Z. There were times I couldn't come to you because it was too much pain going on within me to hear you shoulda, woulda, coulda, if you'd had more faith, if you'd have prayed a little bit harder. See, there are sometimes I have to accept the responsibilities that I did and my own decisions. But guess what? I thank God for the blood. Guess what? I thank God. God for grace. And the same way that he is the one that will forgive us, he will even help us to forgive ourselves. It's nothing wrong with loving somebody, even if they didn't love you back. It's nothing wrong with starting the business, even though it didn't it fell through. It's nothing wrong with buying the house uh, just to find out later on, uh, later on a down the line, uh, something happened uh, and you found yourself with a foreclosure. Forgive yourself. Uh, don't live in the spirit of regret. Uh, don't live with shame anymore. Uh, see, that was the beast I had to let go. Uh, and when I write the book, you'll know the story. But until then, uh, I can't uncover everything right now. Uh, there are some things he will allow me to share. Uh, 
but this is going to free a lot of people and I bless God for him freeing me. See, shame is no longer a part of my vocabulary. Shame is no longer a part of my dress. Shame is no longer a part of my, how do I want to say, it's not a part of my inheritance. It's not a part of my covenant. It's not a part of my portion. So I was carrying this dead thing because I felt like I had something to do with that. And it wasn't me and I couldn't share it. Have you ever found yourself in a place where you're carrying something you want to dump, uh, but you don't know who to dump it off to. Uh, you're carrying something that you just need to talk uh, to somebody about uh, because it's literally eating you alive on the inside. Uh, that's why the cry came. Uh, I can't do this anymore. Uh, but can I tell you to hold on just a little while longer because this too shall pass? Uh, can I tell you to hold on uh, just a little while longer uh, because that is not your portion uh, and what the enemy meant for evil, God is working for your good. But you've got to learn how to let it go. Huh? You've got to learn how to forgive yourself. Huh? You've got to learn how, and God will place huh, somebody in your path huh, to where you can share it with. Huh? Because they said pressure will bust a pipe, huh? but pressure also makes diamonds. Huh? Mm. So don't get weary in this season of well-doing. Just hold on a little while longer. And the God of all grace, all sufficiency, all mercy, the God that is the redeemer, the God that is mm, the Alpha and the Omega, the God that knew your beginning and your, uh, your end in the beginning before he formed you in your mother's womb. Amen. Uh. And can I tell you this before I move on into my message? That's not the message, but I had to be obedient to the spirit of the Lord. I just want to read into your hearing right now, Jeremiah 1 and 5. And it's coming from the New Century Version. And it reads, before I made you in your mother's womb, I chose you. Before you were born, I set you apart for a special. Mm, I set you apart for a special work. Some of you are dealing with rejection and abandonment. You feel like you don't fit in, but I just stopped by before I get into the message that to let you know that the Lord heard your cry. He heard your cry and he woke me. He heard your cry and he sent me. He heard your cry and he said, let them know I chose them. So the abandonment, the rejection, you not being like everybody else, they can't see in you what God has already created you to be. He said, I chose you. I you. I called you with a purpose. So you're not a mistake. You're not a mishap. You're not a reject. You're not a misfit. You are just set apart for the master's use. And until you can embrace that, see, it took me a while to embrace it, but I've latched on and I'm not letting it go because the very ones that hurt me were the ones I was trying to impress. The very ones that I thought needed to validate me were the very ones that didn't even know me. But when God God told me he validated me. Mm. Everything else begins to fall off. And can I tell you this deliverance is an ongoing process. It's not a one time stop, shout. In other words, there are so many things that continue to come up because there's a lot of words that have been spoken. There's a lot of things, behaviors that we've learned, things, labels that we carry that is in your soul bed and your soul consists of your mind, your will, and your emotions. It's in there, but God says for everyone that goes, another may pop up, but guess what? I am the refiner and I have placed you in this season in the furnace of affliction, because I need all of those impurities to come to the surface so that I can wipe them off so that you can begin and live anew. This is November. We got what, after November, another month, two months left in the year, including this one. I don't want you to think I can't count, <laughs> including this one. And God is wanting to transform you so you will be able, and can I say us? so that we will be able to walk in 2024 with our heads up, with the spirit of expectation, not carrying old baggage and old luggage. See, I'm going in with a new mindset. He wants to make new wineskins out of us because there is new wine he wants to pour in you. Amen? And so with all of that being said, and as I begin to mull over that, I had, the Lord had just dropped in my spirit this. And for those who have your Bibles, if you will turn to James 1, and I'm going to start reading verses two through four. I'm going to read them out of two different versions. The first one is coming out, the, out of the New Living Translation. 
And it reads, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Mm. Let me read that last part. I'm going to read it all because I want you to really lay hold of this. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. See, there's a process in the trials. There's a process that's happening in the tribulations. There's a process that happens in the testings. There's a process that happens when we're going through our challenges. But can I tell you, it says here, it's an opportunity for you to consider or to have great joy when you're going through this. Verse four reads, so let it grow. <laughs> let endurance grow. Let this test, let this trial, let this challenge begin to fill you, amen? Let it grow in you. Let it do what God had purposed it to do so that you can be, I'm gonna read it all. I don't wanna get ahead of myself. I get excited on this. It says, so let it grow. For when you, when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect, in other words, mature and complete needing nothing. The Message Bible reads, consider it a sheer gift, mm, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. Some of you are being bombarded on every side, but it says, consider it a sheer gift. Can you imagine your trial is a gift? Your test is a gift? Your challenge is a gift? But the word here says, when it happens and it feels like whew, that you're being flooded, it feels like you're going underwater. But the word of God says, when it come in from every side, consider it mm, a sheer gift. Verse three reads, you know that under pressure, mm, your faith life is forced into the open and it shows your true colors. It will either cause you to bend or break to move forward or to retreat, to stand or to fall, to press forward or to quit. See, when your faith is being challenged, it's going to force you to do one of what they say, fight or flight. You're going to do either one or the other. So when the pressure comes in, what are you going to do? When the pressure is happening and things aren't working the way you think they ought to, because we do have desires, we do, in our finite mind, begin to process things and we believe they ought to work the way we think. But in the beginning, did I not tell you that before you were formed in your mother's womb, that God already had a plan. Before you were created, he'd already written in his book what your life ought to be like. Although we do have mishaps, although we do go through trials and testings. It's not the end of the story until you win. Verse four of the message read, so don't try to get out of anything. Quit praying for God to stop. Quit praying and having others to pray. You out of what God needs in order to process you so that you will mature, so that your faith will begin to develop, so that endurance will come. Because see, this is not the end, it's just the beginning. And he's preparing you for the warfare. He's preparing you in order to walk in your blessings. He's preparing you to go into your promised land. He's preparing you to pull your children out of darkness. He's preparing you to break generational curses. He's preparing you to reach back and to grab the very one uh, that may have been in the mess with you. He is preparing you uh, to preach the good news of the gospel. Uh, see, we want to walk like Jesus. Uh, we want to talk like Jesus. Uh, we want to lay hands on the sick and watch them. Mm, Oh, hallelujah. And watch them to be healed or to recover. We want to cast out demons in his name. We want to have faith that surpasses all understanding. We want all of these things, but we don't want to go through process. We want all of these things, but we don't want to suffer. We want all of these things, but we don't want to be tested and tried. But everything that God has you go through is for our good and for his purpose. And it says, so don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work. Mm. Let it do its work 
so you become mature and well-developed. That's like a cake. A cake is not any good. Once you'd have mixed up all of the ingredients, you get so excited because it's your favorite cake. You'd have put it all together. Some of you bake from scratch. Now you'd have put it in the oven. But the worst thing you can do is to pull it out ahead of time. And then when you go in to dip that, um, I use a toothpick, and you put it in the cake batter or thinking it's done, and there's still some gooey stuff on the inside. In other words, it didn't bake all the way through. Now that's not a good tasting cake. Now you're frustrated. Now you're upset because the very thing that you have formed with your hands, the very thing that you were excited about, the very thing that you have been just waiting for, craving, desiring, expecting wasn't done. It's the same way with God. He said, but can you stay until you're fully cooked? Can you stay until I get the bitterness out? Can you stay stay uh, until I cause the patience uh, to supply. Can you stay uh, until I cause the joy uh, and your faith to develop beyond uh, anything you could imagine or think? Uh, can I continue to keep you in the fire? Don't pray to come out. Because some of you need to stop uh, praying and asking God to bring them out. I'm going to get into that another day. So that you may be well developed and it said not deficient in any way. You're not deficient. There is nothing that's going to be lacking. There is nothing that's going to be missing because now he's developing you. Now you can ice it. Now you can have a little ice cream with it. Now we're in the midst of the celebration because you made it through the fire. Now you can share with others the good news. Now you can share with others because the word says, don't taste and see that the Lord is good. See, even though I had to go through the furnace of affliction, David said it was a good thing that I was afflicted. Now I know him and I know his precepts and his principles. See, it was good. Job said, see, I had to go through this because Job said that although I lost my family, I lost my kids, I'm dealing with health issues, I lost my money, I lost my, my livestock. God allowed the enemy to touch him and all of these things were going on. His health was failing. He was sitting in balls and sackcloth and ashes. He was just sitting there and he couldn't figure out what he had done. And in the midst of all of that, when it was all said and done, Job said, mm. I knew you in my hearing. I knew you based on what others said. But because of my experience with you, now I know you. In other words, I'm intimate with you. In other words, I have built relationship. I can hear. I can understand. Because now that I've come through, you've given me double for my trouble. In other words, God is not going to owe you not one thing when you come out. And you're going to be saying to yourself when you get out of it, who oh God. I thought it was going to kill me. He said, I tried to kill some stuff. I thought it was going to take me out. So did the enemy. It probably should have, would have, could have. But for his mercy, but for his grace, he allowed you to come through it. So for a text or a topic, y'all know I'm not very good at all of these rhyming ones. The Lord just told me to tell you, and he was telling me, there is joy in the journey. Mm. <laughs> There is joy in the journey. I want to read something to you that Rick Warren had written. He's a very famous author and he's very good. If you ever get a chance to pick up some of his material resources and books, pick them up. His name is Rick Warren. And he says, joy is the settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life. The quiet confidence that ultimately Everything is going to be all right. And the determined choice to praise God in every situation. Mm. Because the word says that although I read the other two versions, when you go back and you can read the King James, the new King James, and James 1, 2 and 4, James 1 is going to start out, count it all joy. In other words, when you're going through your trials, when you're going through your tribulations, when you're going through the challenge, you are on a journey. We are not of this world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. So the world is not going to receive us because it didn't receive him. So we need to quit being so shocked 
It's so surprised that we don't fit in. God called us to be set apart. He called us to be the salt and the light of the earth. He called and created us for a, for a specific purpose. But you got to go through the process. You got to go through the journey. And y'all know how I like to do. I like to share a few stories with you in order to let you see that there is a process in the journey because we go through the journey of life. We go through different things. Life in and of itself is a journey. And a journey is to get from one place to another. So I can't stay here in bondage. I can't stay here in brokenness. I can't stay here in lack. I can't stay here where there is no word. I can't stay here when death is looming all around me. I can't stay here in confusion. I can't stay here. I've got to move. And in other words, I've got to journey from sickness, from depression to the glory of the Lord. I've got to journey. In other words, I've got to move in this process. I refuse to die the way I am. I refuse to let my children remain and my children's children. I'm able to fight as Caleb said. I am well able even at my age. I am able to fight and to take what belongs to me and mine. And I'm going to do it because God has equipped me. See, I made it through the fire. So I have built up my endurance. I have made it through the fire. I've gone through the trial. I've gone on the journey. And the Lord is still making. He's still breaking. But guess what? I'm a little bit stronger. That which the enemy thought was going to kill me. And it probably should have only made me stronger and only made me better. Mm. Even when people couldn't see me, God says, I see you and I haven't changed my mind. So shame couldn't reside here anymore. I had to evict him. And some of you need to evict shame. You need to evict regret. You need to evict everything that the enemy is trying to label you. There were people said that you will never amount to nothing. You evict that spirit of insecurity. You evict him tonight in the name of Jesus. Because there is a journey God desires to take you on. So count it all joy if it looks like everything is going to hell in a handbasket. Find the joy. Find that blessed assurance that God is still in control and it's not going to be over until you win. So gird up and allow, oh, hallelujah, and allow the test to have its perfect work. As I was studying and I was reading a few of the, oh, how I want to call them patriots. Patriarchs, let me rephrase that. Patriarchs were called on a journey. We all know about the one that Abraham was called on. But I want to take it a little bit further because I want to read to you. And some of you have heard this. Uh, and it's Genesis 1. I'm sorry, Genesis 12, verse 1. And I'm going to, and verse 1 and 2, and I'm going to read it out of the Bavarian. It's BSB Bible. And it reads, Then the Lord said to Abram, Leave your country your kindred and your country. I'm sorry, your country, your kindred and your father's household and go to the land I will show you. Isn't it amazing? When you give God your, isn't it amazing when the Lord tells you he's getting ready to take you to that next level? Isn't it amazing when you turn and you forsake everything that you become accustomed to? The things you used to do, you don't do no more. The places you used to go, you don't go anymore. You are willing to leave all of that behind because God said it's time for you to go. He was sending Abram on a journey and he didn't tell him where, where he was going. How many of you have God called out? He gave you a glimpse of what was gonna happen. Because verse two says, and I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. See, he called him out, gave him a promise, and he sent him on his way. And Abraham just said, yes, Lord, I'll go. Yes, Lord, I'll go wherever you want me to go. But I don't know if he understood the fullness of the journey. He had the promise. So did Joseph. He heard the word, so did Joseph. But it was the journey that he did not understand everything that he was going to have to, to endure. And it goes on and says that by faith, Abram, when called to go 
to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went without knowing where he was going. See, some of us can't move because we need, excuse me, some of us can't move or go and be obedient to the call of the Lord because we need to know where we're going. We don't want to move because we don't understand what's over the horizon. We don't want to take the journey not realizing there is joy in the journey. As a matter of fact, if you look at the word journey, J-O is at the beginning of the process, journey, jail, and why is the end? In other words, joy encompass your journey. So no matter what you're going through, we've got to maintain that blessed assurance. You remember when the Lord told Abram at that time that he was gonna make him a father of many nations. He didn't understand how he was gonna do it, but he trusted God enough that whatever I have to go through, you said that you're gonna give me the land. You said that you were gonna make me a father of many nations. You said that you were going to create, cause me to be a blessing. You said it. I don't know how you're going to work it out, but I'm just crazy enough to believe if I start out, if I continue to move forward. And it said that Abraham packed up his whole household. He took everything that he belonged to him and he picked up a few stragglers, his nephew Lot. See, can I tell you, when you've given God your yes, everybody can go with you. And we don't understand why the load is a little bit heavy. We can't understand why I'm experiencing all of this unnecessary warfare. You don't understand because see, God just gave it to you and your family. But somewhere along the way, you want to be the good ship lollipop, in other words. You want to pick up everybody because you can change everybody. You want to pick up everybody because you can fix everybody because you are anointed for that. But that's not God's instructions to Abram at that time. He said, Abram, if you'll just go. I'll give you the coordinates later, but can I trust you to have enough faith in me to know that I'm a promise keeper? Can I trust you or can you trust me enough to know that I'm the one who makes provision? Abram, I'm telling you to go, but this is what's going to happen when you get to that destination, to the end of the journey. See, some of us are so focused on the destination, we forget to get the joy out of the journey. We forget to pick up the jewels. We forget to gather the information. We forget the promises and the blessings and the sacrifices. We forget how God stepped in when we didn't know where to go. We forget how God healed the body the last time you were sick. See, we forget. I'm so worried about getting to the other side. I forget to hold on to the nuggets. Nuggets that I found in the midst of the mess to hold on to the pearls in the sand, to hold on to the jewels that were going to eventually fit my crown because I'm so determined I'm going to get through this, not realizing that the one who brought me out is the same one that's going to take me through. Don't be so quick to get to your destination and not enjoy the joy of the journey. It's in the journey that you know God. It's in the journey that he becomes Jehovah Jireh, the one who makes provision. It's in the journey that he becomes your battle axe. It's in the journey when he comes, becomes your salvation. It's in the journey where he becomes your kinsman redeemer. It's in the journey where he begins to pick you up and turn you around. It's in the journey that you experience him as the miracle worker. It's in the journey. But if you don't allow yourself to find the joy in the journey, you're not going to know who he is by the time. Mm that your endurance should have picked up. In other words, that you should have become a little bit more mature. Now you're able to fight a little bit better because see, although they made it to the promised land, the Israelites, they weren't prepared to go in and possess the land. And I wanted to just give you a few heads up. I'm not gonna be very long, but I need to lay this out for you. I want you to be aware of the traps along the journey. And the Lord just showed me three, and I'm sure there are many more, but these are the ones that he had just dropped in my spirit. There are traps 
that will set you up or try to set you up to cause you to quit in the midst of the journey, to cause you to quit and to lose focus. And so your focus now becomes on what it is, maybe a thing, maybe a promise, maybe the man, maybe the job, maybe the business, maybe being famous, maybe. I don't know what it is that you're looking for, but don't allow these traps to set you up till you forget that there is purpose in your journey. Mm. And the first one is murmuring and complaining. <laughs> Be careful in the midst of your journey that you don't begin to murmur or complain. And we can know that about the Israelites' journey. <laughs> When the Lord brought him out of Egypt, Egypt means bondage. When he brought him out of Egypt, slavery. <laughs> when he brought, brought them out because they were crying out to him because of the wicked taskmasters. They were crying out because the enemy was pressing them down. That's what it means to depress. They were pressing them down. They were causing them to build things. They were causing them to do things and they were treating them weak make that analogy sometimes when they called you to work too hard huh? or you working me like a Hebrew slave, but you don't understand huh? the magnitude of what was happening. Huh? So as the Lord brought them out, huh? the great deliverer, we know the plagues that had gone through that God was proving himself, huh? not only to Pharaoh, huh? not only to the Egyptians, but to the Israelites. Huh? He's letting them know, I am huh? the Lord huh? God. Huh? I am the I am that I am. Huh? You cried out and I heard huh? and I sent a deliverer. Huh? And so when they came out, what should have taken them only three days journey? The Lord said that he took them by way of the wilderness. And then in Deuteronomy 8 and 2, see, we're still talking about the journey. We're still talking about how when you're going through your trials, your challenge, and your tests and tribulations, that it's working something out of you and in you. It's causing you to be built up because it says that they had to go by way of the wilderness. And it says that the God was testing them and humbling them to know what was in their hearts. But see, we don't want to be tested. We don't want to be humble. We don't even want to be led by the spirit of God because even when the Lord brought them out and they left, we know the last plague. And when Pharaoh finally let them go, we found they found themselves between the Red Sea and the enemy behind them. But can we talk about the miracle worker in the midst of their journey? He was even proving to them, even when they came out of Egypt, I'm still God. I'm still going to care for you. I'm still going to carry you, but I need you to go this way huh, so that you can understand and build relationship. Can I tell somebody tonight, stop despising your wilderness. Mm. Stop despising your wilderness because it's in the wilderness that you'll know him as a provider. It's in the wilderness that you'll know him as a keeper. It's in the wilderness that you'll realize who he is that I am. It's in the wilderness that he will lead you by a cloud by day and by a pillar of fire by night. It's in the wilderness that he's going to cause you to get closer to him. It's when you're in that wilderness place, when you don't know where you're going to get your next meal and he fed the manna from heaven, when they didn't know where they were going to get the water from. And he caused the water rock to gush out water. See, it's in those places when your heart pressed on every side, in that wilderness place, when you're not familiar, where it doesn't look like it's any vegetation, where there doesn't look like it's any life. But do you understand that while they were in the wilderness, their clothes did not wear out. Their shoes did not wear out. They may not have had what they wanted to. As a matter of fact, even as they begged the Lord to be delivered because of the source of their abuse as being slaves in Egypt. Somewhere along the way, they wanted to go back. Can I tell you, it may be a little bit hard now, but can you find the joy in the journey? Don't desire to go back and don't begin to murmur and complain about what you used to have. Yeah, you had a husband, but he was abusive. Yes, you had money, but you were always in debt. Yes, you had a good job, but you, your kids never saw you. You, you mm. Your health began to fail because that's all you could think about was your career. See, don't allow the trap of causing you to murmur and complain about what you used to have because it wasn't that great when you were in it. So why is it, people of God, that when the road mm, 
Should I say when the rubber meets the road, we always want to go back instead of moving forward. See, I know what's behind me, but they were thinking it was better to go back and be slaves than it would be to trust God along the journey. Can I tell somebody, find the joy in the journey? He is the blessed assurance that everything is going to be all right. Do you know he's still in control? No matter what comes your way, he is still in control. But can you quit being so anxious to get to the end that you're missing the lessons along the way? Can you quit trying to be so anxious of coming out of the fire until you learn who he is on a more intimate level? Can he reveal himself to you in that very place that you are? I don't know what place you're in, but he says, I am the I am. Whatever you need him to be, he says, I am. All I need for you to do is to stop murmuring and complaining and trust me. Can you begin to rejoice? Because that's what it says in Philippians 2, 14 and 15. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God. In other words, stop complaining. Look for the joy in this journey because it's going to work out for your good. Don't long for the good old days <laughs> because while we were in them, they weren't that good, okay? Although they had the leaks, they had certain things, but God had better provisions because he promised them a land flowing with milk and honey to where they will not be slaves, but they will be owners. But you had to go and we have to go this journey by way of the wilderness. The second one, <clears throat> excuse me, the second trap I want you to be aware of, just one more time. <laughs> just one more time. In other words, when we're saying just more time, one more time, and this is Lot's wife. We all know the story about her looking back and turning into a pillar of salt. You want to read the whole story? Read Genesis 19, 1 through 38, and it will cover the whole story about Sodom and Gomorrah. This is not a debate tonight. I'm just telling you just one more. Just one more look. Just one more taste. Just one more day. Just one more chance. Just, 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 just let me get it out of my system. Just one more time. Just, just one more. Just one more. I just need to take a hit of the pipe just one more time, Dad. I just, I just need to drink just one more time, Dad. I just need to shoot up one more. Don't get caught up in the trap of one more. Because when the angels came and they were being spared because of the prayers of Abram, Abraham, he prayed. You do understand that Abraham was an intercessor, right? If you don't, that's just when you study, look that up as well. But it says, that as the angels came to carry out God's plan of destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, but they were in Sodom. And the angels had to, now, the angels told them of the impending destruction that was about to happen, that God was about to rain down fire and brimstone from heaven to wipe out Sodom and Gomorrah. And the angels were trying to get Lot and his family out of there because of Abraham. See, there's blessings also in who you connected to, amen? And so it says here in the text that Lot was dragging his feet. It says here in the text that Lot wasn't too anxious to go. We all know what was going on in the place because God had a problem with all of the sin that was taking place. It was more than just one type of sin, okay? But it was a major factor in it. And so when the Lord had made the judgment call that I'm gonna destroy, and because of his relationship with Abraham, he spared his nephew, Lot, and his family. So when the angel told Lot, you get your family together, even get your daughter's husbands, but they didn't believe him, so they didn't go. It was Lot, his wife, and his daughters. And because the men in the, in the town wanted to abuse and mishandle and misuse the angels for their own satisfaction. 
It says that Lot offered up his daughters that were virgins. You do to them whatever. I don't know if he understood who these men really were, but it was something about them that he knew. Now you, you can't touch them. And so to make a long story short, they finally told Lot, come on, it's time for you to go get your wife. But he said one thing, I need you to get as far away from Sodom as you can. Get out of the city. Take your family, take your wife and your daughter and do not look back. Again, here Lot, they, the angels physically had to escort them out of Sodom. So it wasn't like he was willingly going, not really understanding that it was a, an urgent request that they leave. They finally get out. What was it? Don't look back. Just one more. Lot's wife turned around. I don't know what it was about Sodom. Maybe she just remembered. You know how we do when we leave a house or we're leaving things behind or maybe a job? Let me just go say goodbye to this one more person. Let me just go look at the house one more time and just look in the room. Let me go and just gather my thoughts and just have regulation. Regu mm recollection, amen, of the things that took place or transpired in the home. You know, we call them memories. We call them things that we have in, that were in, dear to us. And I just want to look one more time. But he said, don't look back. Can I tell you, don't allow your one more time to cause you to become paralyzed with what is behind you. See, it's only destruction back there. Quit looking at it. It's only chaos and confusion. Quit looking at it. It's nothing back there for you. Don't ask for one more on this journey because you have to leave this place. It's being destroyed. You have to leave. There is no more love there and there's abuse. You have to leave. There is no more food coming on the wall like the lepers. They were sitting outside. He said, shall we sit here and die? It's time to move. And there is an urgency because there is destruction behind you. Don't look back. Keep moving. Get to that safe place in God. And Lot was telling the angels, I'm afraid of going into the hill country. I'm afraid to go into the mountains because I don't know what it's going to be like in the mountains. Maybe they're going to hurt me. Maybe I'm going to be. He had all of these questions about moving to this place of safety. To where? He would rather remain close to destruction. Can I say that again? He was so concerned about the unknown and what possibly could happen to where he was willing to stay close to destruction. I don't know who this is for and it's even for me. There are times God is telling us to move and one more is not going to help you. Looking back is not going to help you. It's only going to cause you to be paralyzed. And that's what happened to her. Stop allowing what was behind to paralyze you, to keep you from moving into the promise. God has made a promise and he is a promise keeper. So again, find joy in your journey. And the last one I want to talk about the third, amen, is I don't think I can, or I don't think we can. See, that, that even of itself, when we begin to speak it out of our mouths, we have to be mindful of what we're saying. And we're talking about the spies, and you can find this story in Numbers 13, we all know about the spies. When the children of Israel finally made it out of the wilderness, they were just about to go into their promised land. I don't think we can. They sent out 12 spies, according to Moses, 12 from each tribe of Israel. And they went into the land. Moses had given them specific instructions. When you go into the land, I want you to look for the, I want you to look at the people in the land. I want you to give me just a general report of everything in Canaan. I, and he told them where to go and what to come back with. They went and they came back and they found the fruit. They said that there were everything. Now the report that the 10 gave caused the children of Israel to doubt. And can I tell you, they went and they spied out. They even brought back evidence of the fruit. 
but in the midst of their journey, <laughs> because they didn't allow themselves to remember how God brought them out. In the midst of their journey, and they began to see everything. They saw the promise. They saw the land. They saw it was flowing with milk and honey. They were no longer focused on the inheritance and the promise. They became focused on the people and the giants. Can I tell you, don't become focused on the people and the giants? Can I say, don't become focused on the obstacles? Can I tell you not to become, become focused on your inability? Because if God told you to go, you go. All I'm asking, remember how he brought you out. Remember how he saved you. Remember how he healed you. Remember how he made provisions. Don't become like the ones that begin to say, I can't or we can't when he can. In the journey from bondage to your promise, find the joy, find the jewels, find the lessons, find the promise, but most of all, find him and know that he is more than able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think. Amen. Find joy in the journey so that you will become complete and entire and your faith will be built. Amen. And for those who don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, if you will just repeat after me, say, Father, I acknowledge Jesus as the son of God. Jesus, I ask for you to come into my life. I believe that you died and rose on the third day. I give you my life. Take control. Amen. I now turn it over to our announcements. I pray this word was a blessing to you. If you would like to sow into this movement and financially support the initiatives that we are doing at Global Apostolic Movement, we have five ways for you to do so. You can visit our website at www.gamovement.org to give by credit or debit card. We are on Cash App at dollar sign GA Movement. We are on PayPal and Zelle at our email address, gamovement21 at gmail.com and also the Givelify app under Global Apostolic Movement. We also invite you to become a covenant partner of Global Apostolic Movement. We are a global movement for the 21st century saints. And for more information on how to become a covenant partner, please visit our website at www.gamovement.org, click connect, then click covenant partners. Global Apostolic Movement has launched our outreach ministry, and we invite you to join us as we seek to connect globally with those in need. If you're interested in supporting, please be on the lookout for information that will be posted on our social media pages. We thank you in advance for your assistance in helping us with our passion to help others. Our very own Chief Apostle LaShawn Reese is back with inspirational moments every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube or Facebook Live. You're invited to tune in and receive encouragement and motivation to help you make it through the week. We encourage you to invite others to experience inspirational moments. GAM is inviting men to join our men's group hosted and directed by our very own Elder Elisha Small every third Monday night at 8 p.m. This group is for men supporting men through encouragement and empowerment. These private meetings are for men only and is a secure place for men to discuss and ask questions. For login information, please look for the flyer posted on our social media pages. We at Global Apostolic Movement are super excited to announce our founder, Chief Apostles, next chapter as LaShawn Reese Ministries. Apostolic covering, ministry building, life coaching, leadership development, motivational speaking, and marriage counseling are available through LaShawn Reese Ministries as God leads her to awaken and ignite the purpose in you. Please show your support and visit, follow, and like her social media pages on Facebook and YouTube at LaShawn Reese Ministries, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at I am LaShawn Reese. And for more information, you can email at 
ApostleLashawnReese at gmail.com. You can meet us back here next Sunday and every Sunday at 7 p.m. for our virtual church services. However you are tuning in now is the way that you can join next week. We are on the same Zoom meeting ID every week and Facebook Live at Global Apostolic Movement. And now for our benediction. My God, my God, my God. What a powerful word on tonight, Pastor Cole. Thank you, God, that you was the obedient vessel on tonight. You allowed the Holy Spirit to come in and use you and begin to illustrate to us the different things that we've gone through. Talking about there is joy in the journey. There's a song we used to sing that said, all that I've been through, I still got joy. We thank God for the word of God on tonight. She began to come out of James 1 and 24, telling us to count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptation. And she told us that there were traps along the way, really that, realizing that there is joy in the journey, but there are traps and obstacles along the way that's going to try to detour you from getting to where God wants you to go. She talked about murmuring and complaining. She talked about just one more time and said, I don't think I can. She came out of Deuteronomy 8 and 2, Philippians 2, 4, 3, 14 through 15, Luke 17, 11 through 19, Genesis 19, 1 through 38, and Numbers 13 and Genesis 12, one and two. There's a song that says in the valley, there is peace in the valley. There is joy in the valley. There is healing in the valley for there is joy in the journey and do not despise small beginning. We thank God for the word of God on tonight. Truly God is Truly, God is a man of, of, of grace and compassion, and we thank God for his mercies that he give us each and every day. We thank God for the word of God. We thank God for our chief apostle and her family, and I thank God for each and every one of you tuning in on tonight. I pray to God that the word was a blessing to you. Don't worry about where you're going. Enjoy the journey, but there's joy when you get to where you're going. Trust in God. Believe in God. Lean and depend not on your own understanding, but to acknowledge God in all of our ways. Why? Because there's peace in the valley. There is joy in the valley. There's deliverance and there is healing in the valley. We thank God for the word on tonight. I'm not going to prolong the time because truly my heart and my soul is full. I'm feasting on the word of God that God alike allow Pastor Cole to deliver to us on tonight. And I pray that you are, um, take the word with you. Take it on your job. Take it in your car. Take it in your home. Take it around your children. Take it even into the school because there's joy in the journey, saints of God. And now for our benediction, which is coming from number 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We thank God for you all tuning in on tonight and we hope to see you all, God. We hope to see you all next Sunday at 7 p.m. Go with God. Stay blessed. Why? Because there's joy in the journey. You are dismissed.